Pictures up. Let's roll sound. Tap speed. Camera speed. Two. I'll show. Take two. Mark. A student named Scout Schultz was shot and killed. Others by blaming campus, campus police, police for using deadly force. An engineering student and LGBTQ activist was police shot and Schultz killed by campus suicidal. police at Georgia Tech University Saturday night. One of them of Scout Schultz chasing protests uh, young over people down the street. The the outsiders outsiders Scout was president of the, of the Georgia Tech Pride Alliance. Alliance. That organization told us today after the shooting seen in this cell phone video. Scout was different. Scout was like, this is who I am, and this is at the core of my being, and I need to fight for this. And I think in the end, they were right. I met Scout at my first Pride Alliance meeting at freshman year. Scout was a intersex, non-binary person, used they, them pronouns, was president of Pride Alliance, um, very, you know, politically active. Scout um, did a great job, really getting me interested in political activism. This is the face of the community. Scout was Georgia Tech queer community. Like, its heart, its soul, its pillar, it's basically the reason it existed. The queer community on campus doesn't feel like they're being heard, even after everything that has happened on campus. There's still a sense that it's us versus them. There is not really a lack, of, there's a lack of cohesion amongst the queer community and the rest of the Georgia Tech campus. And that is very prevalent. It was prevalent before, but now it's, it's almost oppressive. And we created a list of things that we felt like the school, like, needed to, like, get, needed to provide for its students so it could do better and things could like, what happened to Scout could not happen again. I mean, like, and look at Peterson, like, after Scout died, what did Peterson do? Peterson went and visited all of the cishet frats and played beer pong with them. Like, did not visit any queer students, did not say, hi Jade, I'm really sorry for your loss, this is really shitty, and I'm gonna make a change happen. Like, granted, like, in the grand scheme of things, like, I'm a little person, but like, he didn't come up to any of us. We had to fight to get into his fucking office. The Legend of Korra. When we heard a knock on the door. We opened it and we saw Scout. And Scout was looked really troubled and upset about something. And Scout just kind of stormed off the, off into the hallway without really saying what was wrong. I sprinted down the stairs in an attempt to meet Scout at their room, see if I could catch them when they entered it. And they weren't there. I talked to Scout's roommates, Lit and Caden, and they hadn't really seen them. We run outside, and I, in the distance, I see Scout and a bunch of police officers. I wasn't, I couldn't really hear what anyone was saying, but I saw them holding out guns. I was, I was terrified, I was worried. I'm never really going to be able to forget the sound of that gunshot when it rang out. So it wasn't until I had arrived at my apartment that um, one of my friends pulled me aside and told me that it was very likely that the person who was shot was Scout. And I had to step out of the room immediately. screaming and then I I tried to run over to figure out what's going on and see if they were okay um and so sure enough I get some texts from what was our current exec board Lynn William 
Um, so they meet up with me in uh, my apartment and they're talking and they're like, we gotta get to Grady. Have, has anyone seen Kat? When the police told me where Scout was being taken to, be, to the hospital, I uh, immediately tried to get there as fast as I can. Didn't talk to anyone. Desperate, desperately tried to get someone to drive me there. Was knocking on people's windows in the streets in Georgia Tech. And actually, I remembered that when I was walking back from Music Midtown, I had actually run into Cat by pure coincidence. Like, I, Cat was just bolt, like walking so fast. And I had said hi, um, you know, I just like waved to Cat, and they compl she completely did not notice me. So I was the one to say, I know where Cat is. She was walking, or she was walking in the directions of a MARTA station. I think it took me less than an hour to get there, almost entirely on foot. And I just waited, crying in a hospital waiting room. Um, we show up at the, the hospital and we find Kat. Um, Kat was, I think, in the lobby. Oh, was she? Yeah. And we were sitting in the waiting room for what felt like hours, like years. It's like Kat was crying, Bailey was comforting her, um, and then I was crying and Kathleen was comforting me. And it was just kind of like a cycle of someone crying or all of us crying. On September 17th at 2 a.m., I got a text message from my friend who worked at GTVD. It was simply, I'm sorry, I hope you're doing well. And I thought nothing of it until nine hours later, I get on Facebook and the first thing I see is, they fucking killed Scout. It took me several hours to even believe what I saw. And this was filmed by several students. This was spread around campus. This became mainstream news as this was the first time in history that GTVD had ever discharged a gun. And not only did they discharge a gun for the first time, but they used it to shoot a student. A student who is facing mental health crises. Yet people were putting I Heart GTVD uh, chalk on the sidewalks. I saw a lot of people's opinions. Everyone's talking about that dude who got shot on campus who totally deserved it. And I, I just got the impression that everyone was demonizing my best friend who had just shot them in front of me. If there was a point where I felt like I really didn't belong on this campus, that was probably that was probably it. In response, Georgia Tech Progressive Student Alliance and Pride Alliance stepped up. They decided that they were going to hold a memorial, that they were going to actually do something, because the administration wasn't communicating. The administration couldn't communicate because of legal fears, because of liability issues. Um, so they just kind of left it to the students to heal and try to heal on their own. Um, so the Progressive Student Alliance and Pride Alliance, they created this, um, they started planning this memorial, this vigil in Scout's honor. This was taken over by the Georgia Tech administration with little knowledge of those who originally planned it, uh, which limited who is allowed to talk, which limited um, basically what could be said about the situation. Scout wouldn't have wanted that vigil, that empty, like, charade. It's, Scout would have wanted something that was remembered. So, Scout, uh, so we marched. We marched for Scout. We joined that march. The anarchists, the queers, the friends, the people who cared and who were hurt well before, well before any violence happened, Georgia Tech was opening up incidents reports. Georgia Tech were calling in APD and GSU in military, um, paramilitary riot gear. 
they were ready. They were starting a battle. They were going into this as a battle after already killing a student. And we're being met already with prepared oppression. Because they, the school, the Board of Regents, the politicians, they just wanted it to be done. They wanted it to be silenced. And also, they wanted a scapegoat. In Dallas, Scout's, uh, Scout's ex-partner um, came up to me and they said uh, that Cat had been arrested. And um, it was a few of us uh, who immediately tried to find out what happened. And I remember approaching the police officers being like, my friend just got arrested and being met with hostility and with anger and disgust at my existence. It's easier to scapegoat somebody who is innocent or innocent, you know, an individual, you know, one person who might already embody a lot of things that people don't agree with. It's easy to pin all the problems on a person like that. And there you go. It was just a recipe for what seemed like Kat's destruction. According to the Code of Conduct and the OSI policy, cases need to be resolved within 30 business days of the administrative conference, where Kat was presented with the alleged violations of Student Code of Conduct and an explanation of her rights. Her administrative conference was October 10th. 30 business days would have been late November, and she could have returned to class this semester, but it took approximately 70 business days for OSI to give a hearing, unjustly denying her another semester of education. It should be noted that in cases of interim suspension, this process should be expedited. And it should be noted that the use of interim suspension is supposed to be reserved for students who pose a clear and present danger to campus. Cat does not pose a clear and present danger to campus. I'm just, I'm just wondering because it says that it, it, can't, it can be more than 30 days but that the person should be informed and Kat specifically was not informed why they were taking so long. Are you her attorney? Double? No? Well, I'm not at liberty to discuss it with you. Oh. Uh, uh, I, I am comfortable with the process we used well, and how it worked. I, I found no irregularities in it. I've looked into it and I'm comfortable with how it works, but I really can't, really can't say any more than that. I can't even tell you what the outcome is. I spent a lot of time waiting. My mental health was at the at its worst point that I've ever been. And it's honestly a surprise that I've managed to keep being here for as long as I have. Right. I just wish that someone at the school really could have helped, you know? Just reached out and just let me know what was happening and give me a reason to keep up hope. a cop's car burning. Then suddenly everybody, everybody and their mother was in like so, were like everybody's pointing fingers at all the grieving people. Suddenly people in their windows of dorms would have we support GTPD on their, on their windows for everyone to see. Didn't really think, and they didn't really think about what that statement means. It's, what had GTPD done other than kill a student on campus? You support? This is, this is the time to be pledging your support to GTPD? Really? That was so unbelievably vicious. Honestly, I would call it violence. Um, I was in the helping hands at Georgia Tech Group, and I was like, oh yeah, how cool, GTPD. Totally, like, let's support cops, like, woo! But then, that was because I got that fucking email from Peterson saying that outside instigators had caused the riots. I didn't know that Kat was there. I didn't know my friends were there. I didn't know there were so many trans people there. Before he even left Central Campus, text went out threatening of this violent protest 
it was later learned that before even the vigil was over, arrest warrants and incident reports were opened, ready to take people in, ready to take away our friends and punish them and reshape a narrative that wasn't that GTPD had hurt these students and these students were, these young people had lost so much, had lost a soul and vital, like a soul of their community, the vital part of their community. And I didn't know that until I went to T plus and I was like, well shit, these are my friends and they were there and they saw people get hit and bashed around. Of course, this comes back to context matters and the nature of exactly why GTPD was in this discussion does not call for their, for their for support to be needed for them. The support was needed by the community and we weren't getting it. In fact, we were getting the opposite. It would have been one thing if they had been silent on both ends because I would have just in, um, signified an apathetic campus. But after everybody had aligned themselves with GTPD, it felt like there was a malignant attitude towards the LGBTQI community because they were unwilling to give any sort of compassion. After the protest, GTBD started an unprecedented witch hunt. It ended up targeting a largely black and largely trans population. This led to the death of two more of our friends, Dallas Punja and Kirby Jackson. Now Scout's gone, the administration has really just tried to push me out of the picture for as long as they can. They've taken Dallas and Kirby and really everyone I've been close to. And they, it just really feels like everyone's saying, you don't really belong here. Get used to it. There was no passion for anyone besides the administration. That's why we've lost three people. It's because we aren't getting that support. We spend nights with each other, like, just to make sure, like, we're not gonna die in the, in the morning, you know? I think a lot of times that I'm likely to be the next person lost because of that effort, and I've done everything I can to, like, make sure that doesn't happen. I don't know what words to say to make, it, to make the school understand how much pain they put us all through. You wronged us. You did this. <laughs> there are three lives that are gone because of you, Georgia Tech. And I'm not sure that I'm ever going to be able to forgive